Chapter 11 in the PMBOK guide is huge. I get a lot of comments about how big it is. Now, if you look at procurement and quality combined, you've got six processes. That is not up to the amount of processes in risk. It's a seven-headed beast. So there's a lot of stuff to talk about. One of the topics I get a lot of questions about is page 423 and 424, assessment of other risk parameters. I want to go through these one by one really quickly for you. If you take a look at the whiteboard here, you can see that I've begun to categorize these. So the first one is urgency, listed on page 424. Urgency, I'm bucketizing it into a category of time. What do I mean by a category of time? Well, urgency is the period of time within which a response to the risk is to be implemented in order for it to be effective. So we can say urgency is about time to act for the response to be effective. In the same token, we can say proximity is all about the time factor before the risk may have an impact on one or more project objectives. So it's the time before there's an impact on the project's objectives. And last but not least, dormancy. Again, it's time before the risk impact is discovered. It says, the period of time that may elapse after a risk has occurred before its impact is discovered. A short period indicates low dormancy. So that's that. And then moving to the, our next category, I have bucketized these into E's. And under the E's category, we've got manageability, controllability, and detectability. Now let's explore these one by one. Let's start with manageability. Manageability is all about E's, and it is linked to the risk owner. Ease with which the risk owner can manage the occurrence or impact. So ease to manage occurrence or impact. The next one here is controllability. Again, think about ease to control the risk's outcome. So when we talk about manageability, we're talking about two things here, occurrence or impact. You see that? This could be linked to a mitigate strategy. For example, when we talk about controllability, we're talking about the ability to control the outcome. It says, the degree to which the risk owner or owning organization is able to control the risk's outcome, where the outcome can be easily controlled, controllability is high. So whatever the strategy you're discussing that revolves around some continuation of the episode after you've taken action on the risk, we talk about controllability in that respect. It says, where the outcome can be easily controlled, controllability is high. So you want to think about ease, again, ease of controlling the outcome. Okay? And last but not least, we have detectability. This, again, is ease of detecting that a risk has occurred or is about to occur. That's detectability. So a risk flying under the radar, detectability is low. We want detectability to be high. There's actually an error somewhere in the PMBOK guide I'm going to show you guys, hopefully, by the time we get done. The final category is extent. The extent to which a risk is related to other risks. It says... The extent to which the risk is related to other individual project risks, where a risk is connected to many others, connectivity is high. The next one is the extent to which the risk has an effect on the company's strategic impact. And it says here, the potential for the risk to have a positive or negative effect on the organization's strategic goals, where the risk has a major effect on strategic goals, strategic impact is high. Last but not least, we talk about extent of mattering, to borrow a word from a buddy, the risk doctor, where a risk is found to matter a lot. We say propinquity is high. So propinquity is the final one. So we've got urgency, 
proximity, dormancy, manageability, controllability, detectability, connectivity, strategic impact, and propinquity. Now, we also have the good old probability and impact, which is listed under data analysis. So in addition to this probability and impact, we have all of these other parameters. That's why it's called assessment of other parameters, because we already have probability and impact. And for many organizations, that is okay. That is enough. But for some organizations, they need something extra. And that is where this error in the PMBOK guide comes into play. If you go to page 426, you'll see the hierarchical charts, and this is talking more about bubble charts. So you see proximity is low, going that way. Incorrectly, incorrectly, they have put low here for detectability. And that should not be the case. Detectability, we don't want it to be low in this zone where we say small bubbles in this area are acceptable. Okay? Acceptable. Small bubbles. Okay? We accept small bubbles. In this image, you can see we've plotted proximity and detectability. So we need to get rid of this. In your PMBOK guide, page 426, I want you to correct that to high. High detectability is what we want, not low detectability. We accept those that we can highly detect. And as far as proximity, we got low. So this area has low proximity risks. They're not close to us before they have an impact on the project's objectives, right? And then we have high detectability, okay? High detectability. So if you go back to your book, cross out low, and then on this side, we want to put low on the right side. Low needs to be here, high needs to be here. If you've not made that correction, do that. Now, looking at bubble size, we can say large bubbles are big dollars, small bubbles, think about them as low dollars. You can even use the cent sign. So these ones that are huge impact on our objectives these big bubbles, if you had a big bubble here, this is not acceptable, right? For it to be acceptable, we want small bubbles, okay? And then the image says large bubbles here are unacceptable, which makes sense because talking about bubble size, we're talking about the impact value, not the proximity value or the detectability value. Those are accounted for on the axes that they're on, but talking about impact value, we're talking about High impact risks being large bubbles. Low impact risks being low bubbles. We want low impact, high proximity, uh, low proximity, I beg your pardon, and high detectability. You get what I'm saying? So low proximity, high detectability, and low impact value here. So we can add the small bubbles are low impact value. Okay. So it's a little bit tricky sometimes to keep all these descriptions straight, but that is clearly an error. It went to the printer and I believe someone got creative and thought, oh, at the zero point, we always have low, low. No, not in this case. It was high detectability. And um, you might have watched a video where Dr. David Hilson and I actually address this. We talk about it and we, we warn people not to fall into the trap of thinking that low detectability risks are good. All right, so if all of this talk that you know has been going on for the past number of minutes is interesting to you, and maybe you are going for the RMP exam, I just want you to know there is a stellar course on praiseon.com. When you get to praiseon.com, scroll down, click on more products, and keep going down till you see the risk doctor and I right there, okay? That is the one you want to click on. Now, when you click on that, it takes you to an on-demand course. You can take this course immediately as you see fit, okay? 
and it will take you here. Sign up. It is a great course. I have been through it. Highly advise it to anyone going for the RMP, anyone who wants to beef their knowledge in the world of the PM, PMP or the, the PMI, RMP rather, strongly advise that you jump on this and go for the training. All right. I hope this helps you. Those of you on the LMS, remember, I cover this in a lot more detail. So this is just the top of the waves. All right. I wish you all the best. Speak to you soon.